This is the shortest leg that we took from Toledo or Fort Norman to Norman Wells. An Arctic fox. Uh, Toledo is just above on the bank above it there. We spotted this coming in about uh, midnight. We're going to camp on the uh, Great Bear River as you'll see in a moment. This huge expanse of uh, rock is called Great Bear Rock. There is a peregrine up on that pinnacle, but we didn't go up to check it out because we just didn't have time. This is an example of uh, boys and supplies that the Coast Guard leaves all along the shore. Canoe. I mean, unknown, actually. Not only did Wayne make dinner, but he also caught it. Turn it sideways. So, yeah. Now grin, that big grin. <laughs> well, 30 more miles to go today, and it's 6 o'clock. Probably won't go that far. I've often wondered about the coloring of the birds, but as you can see with this white front on this adult, not that easy to see. When looking for sights, these are the three things we were looking for, either the adults, the young, or the excrement, or mutes. I've banded this young one, and now I'm weighing it, and this seems to be the best way to do it. These people were stopped, had engine problems, and in the north you always stop to help out if necessary, but this guy said he was fine. When the females are right at the edge of the site like this, I know that the young are about two to three weeks of age. It's easier to go right down, and so that's what I'm doing here. This is tricky because there's no harness. I won't throw the bait. I holler to let Keith know he can take the rope. Setting up camp and Keith always started a fire. He uses what he called Indian fire starter and I happened to catch his methodology and approach right here. This is my view from the front of the boat looking back. Betty and Wayne, who's checking his GPS, and Keith and Heather. I mentioned the weather could change, and here we see there's rain coming, so everybody's bundling up and getting ready for it. We have been on the river for about 10 days. Other than a few towns along the way, a lot of house and the guy that was broken down, things like that. What we haven't seen is this. So this was a little bit of a shock, but Norman Wells, which we're just coming into, is a major center. Norman Wells is pretty spread out, so we uh, camped at where we thought was the main area and we're just heading into town right now.
This is quite pretty. Norman Wells actually gets more sunlight than we do down here in Calgary. Beautiful downtown Norman Wells. Stopped in at the local museum slash gift house and they had a map there. You can see Bear Rock and of course Norman Wells where we are now and we're gonna go all the way up to Fort Good Hope in the next stretch. The story of the Alaska Highway and how it was built is well known, but this is a lesser known story, but I thought uh, no less interesting really, especially uh, given the uh, time that they put it through and of course the conditions that they had. What I find interesting about this story two things one how quickly they got it done really in uh, just a, a couple of years to go through that and with the old equipment and the conditions that they had to work under that's really uh, remarkable and the other thing is that uh, in norman wells there's still no permanent road going into it it's still just a winter road they can have jets coming in as you can see but uh, just a winter road and of course they have the river to uh, bring up equipment When I went up the Alaska Highway and it was still gravel and very windy and very treacherous, you needed always two spare tires. I remember talking to a guy that said somebody bid on the used equipment that was up there, $100,000, and in one spot alone he found $2 million worth of D9 cats and things like that. Obviously a bit of controversy here. Uh, I think probably a great project from an engineering standpoint, but what a waste. Just amazing how incompetent and irresponsible the Canadian government was back then. I can tell you that the insects up there, the mosquitoes, uh, black flies, things like that are just incredible. If you take a deep breath, uh, you can get a mouthful of them. I have no idea how they managed to get by without insect repellent and some of the clothing that we have now.
Well, at least the government did have enough brains to use native guides, but uh, from what I understand, they didn't treat them very well. I found this a bit amusing, and uh, my comment is, I wonder what they really mean here. Here's where we camped uh, in town here, on one of the main uh, benches that they have uh, going into town. This is the inside of my tent when I'm actually in it. Uh, nothing fancy, but I thought I'd uh, show it anyway. <laughs> 